Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel, Things We Love. I'm Izzy. And I'm Austin. And this is actually, we're finally filming. Finally. Finally, <laughs> our part two of our three-part update on our Bearded Dragons. Uh, the first we did um, brumation and mating. Yeah. And now this one's gonna be about our beardy being gravid and egg laying. Um, and then the third one will be about egg care and egg hatching. So part two right now. In our last video, we left off with our two bearded dragons mating. And at that point, we weren't quite sure if, if yeah, we weren't sure if they, if it worked, if it was successful. Um, I think we started upping calcium just in case. Right. Oh, did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's very important that for them, for the female bearded dragon while she's gravid to have a, a good amount of calcium, yeah. uh, because that's how they make those eggs is from the calcium from their body. Yeah. Want to give them every time, obviously when you feed them with feeders, um, you want to, with insects, you want to give them the calcium. Plus, uh, you want to give them a lot of vegetables, too. I think that was, uh, you know, once something that really helped with her. Right. But, you know, let's say it was about like a week, week and a half. Week and a half, yeah. Um, she started getting a little bit wider, you know, in the belly section. Uh, she seemed to be getting a little bigger. Yeah. Um, did we notice any behavior? At that point, no. Not I really. think her belly just started getting bigger. Yeah. When So after they mated, Ozzy had just come out of brumation, and she had not voided since before brumation or like maybe in between once or twice in between brumation. Yeah. So it, it's a big concern. You always want to make sure that your bearded dragon is voiding properly, whether they be pregnant or not. It's very important to make sure that um, the food that's in their belly is not becoming impacted and rotting away. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Did yeah. I use the right words? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that was the biggest concern of mine when I noticed her belly started to get bigger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was like a big thing. And like every day we were, she was like trying to encourage it and giving her warm baths and really trying to make sure that she can, you know, feel relaxed and get that out of her. Cause it, you know, it, food's been sitting in there, you know, cause she did eat, you know, here and there because right. It would seem like she was coming out of brumation, like we talked about, and then you know she'd go back in. Right. So there was times where she did eat and pick a little bit here and there, not like full, full on eating, but yeah. Right. So that food is just still there; it has not came out. She she never pooped, so um, it was very, you know. Right. Yeah. So what did we? So you mentioned like warm baths. Yeah. That's one way to um, encourage your bearded dragon mm -hmm. to avoid. Yeah, blueberries, um, fruits that would help them like. Um, soften some of the stool that's yeah. within them. Um, um, I but I remember when you messaged me. I was at oh, work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. It was the warm bath that she did it. She was like a, a, a new mom you know, that had a yeah. or you know a mom that just had a baby and like that first poop. It was well, like, she was it like was that. Huge too. Yeah, and it was huge. She sent me. Maybe we'll put a picture up for you. It but. was the size of her body. This oh my God. this uh, stool. Yeah. Of, you know. Um, so I was just really, really happy when she finally got mm -hmm. that out. It, like, and that was in the bath. It, it was yeah. in the bath, yeah. It told me that she was okay yeah. and that there was nothing stuck in her or that she was, that she was just right. fine. Especially so. with her maybe being gravid and becoming gravid. Right. You know, we really want to make sure that she got that out first. Right, yeah. So that if was she, a big, big moment. If she would have grown eggs and had that big old yeah. turd inside. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, and I think that was what, like, that was, like, at a week, week and a half yeah. after mating. So, like, that was a big milestone. And then, right. you know, and then we started seeing some behavior changes after that. Yeah. After that week and a half, it's going on two weeks now, She's she pooped, she voided, and then her appetite just became so, she was like a mad lady. She was just wanting anything in sight. She was eating like she's never eaten before like she was so, like she was hungry yeah but this is because she's producing those eggs and that takes a lot of calcium and a lot of nutrition um you know she has to use all that up so every time she'd eat we we're loading her up with calcium mm -hmm. we right. also got a vitamin yes um oh, yeah. you know like a bearding uh reptile vitamin mm -hmm. it was a liquid and so we'd give her drops of that and that seemed to really boost her energy, um, energy yeah. and she was yeah it was uh felt like she really needed that 
Also, she was drinking lots of water at this time. She was, and not only did we get like calcium powder to dust the feeders with, um, but we also got liquid calcium, yeah. which you can put in their baths when you give them warm baths. And it's yeah. important um, to to uh, find different ways yeah. to give them the nutrients they need. So we mm -hmm. also put the calcium in her water, which was safe to do, um, and uh, kept her hydrated yeah. that way with the calcium and intakes. It, and so then you could see her getting bigger and bigger. Yep. And then I think right after that two week mark, we could visibly start to see those grape-like mm -hmm. lumps in her belly. You can really see that um, in her. You can you can start to feel them. You know, you'd be yeah. very gentle. Yep. Um, one way to really make sure or to like know if your bearded uh, dragon is gravid, um, you can hold them and you can lift their tail and you know, kind of like when you check to see um, if they're a boy or female, a male or, or female, you can lift it up and kind of lift them off so they're just on their two their front two legs and their belly will stretch out mm -hmm. and um you'll you'll really see them yeah then. you can really it's see a them really then. good That's way crazy. to tell like if you because maybe they're bigger you may maybe you have a little chunky dragon yeah. yeah um so this is a good way to see it and um something that we recommend if mm -hmm. you, you aren't sure right yeah. now we're nearing the three week mark which is when we noticed ozzy slow down on eating she wasn't as hungry anymore she was becoming more and more anxious and we weren't quite sure. We were just trying to pay attention to her uh, behaviors. Yeah, because they say, like, if you research it and you look up things, right. they're saying four to six weeks after mating, you know, that's when they are going to start to lay, you mm -hmm. know. And so we're like, you know, just keeping an eye on her. Right. But uh, everything with her just seems seemed to be, like, more sped up. Like, it happened yes. so fast with her. Like, yeah. I don't know, between that time she mated and then all the changes and then... You know, what was it like two weeks two and a half weeks you know the anxiousness was starting to happen mm -hmm. and um then she stopped eating she kind of slowed down on her eating what mm -hmm. you were just saying yeah. yeah she slowed down on her eating the anxiousness occurred and it was the same anxiousness we used to see uh, because i think a lot of bearded dragons yeah. don't like to void in their enclosures and so whenever ozzy would like to void in the past she would glass surf mm -hmm. and want to get out and not you know, yeah, they, they hate pooping in their enclosure. Most right. Of them. Yeah. So um, we would let her out and I was just like, whatever, I'm just going to let her out. Mm -hmm. It was important. It's important during this time, right before they um, lay their eggs, yeah. that they get a lot of exercise. It allows their muscles to be healthy enough to lay the eggs. Yeah. So we'd uh, let her roam around, mm -hmm. roam around the room. Um, get some exercise in. Yeah. Um, we would do baths a lot. Right. And she would like, she would actually, this was the first time we ever saw her swimming. We should probably throw a, a little video yeah. out. Yeah. But she would swim in the bath. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so cute. We've never seen her do that. Yes. She was playing in it and it just seemed like she was getting her exercise. It's so cute. Yeah. And she, it seemed like she kept thinking she had to avoid. Right. Right. Look, she seemed like she could keep having to avoid. So she would keep, she would push out, but then she, at some point she, there was none left because right. she, you know, it would just started, be little tiny, um, yeah, stools, stools, or like just the white part of the pee, right? Um, because she had got it all out, and she stopped eating too. You right, know? she slowed down. So her she eating. wasn't having much in her belly anyway. Mm -hmm. I think she just felt that that she had to lay those eggs, mm -hmm. and to her, she wasn't sure yet. Uh, the very first time right. that you know what what that was and this was about going this was going on the third week third week and yeah. so this is when you know we we start to make the lay box mm -hmm. my hubby was very thorough when it came to the lay boxes wouldn't you say because you came w home with like a couple different options yeah yeah i went to the store and i got a few different like toads yes. one that was like big and taller and then one that was kind of like longer but like sh more shallow shallow yeah yeah mm -hmm. So um, we've seen a lot of different ideas mm -hmm. on YouTube and things like that. Videos, researching right. as the, we do. The lot. most, oh, sorry, but yeah. the most important part of that lay box is what you, the substrate, what you put right. in there, and you want to do a 50-50 mix of play sand and like a soil, like a dirt or soil, mm -hmm. you know, something that doesn't have any additives or chemicals. Obviously, you don't want any fertilizer or anything. So you want to get like a, just a basic soil, dirt, and sand. Mix that in and you want it wet. Right. But you can tell him about. Yeah. yeah. So he had those, uh, uh, like two different options really mm -hmm. for us. And we liked the idea of 
putting something in her enclosure that she could yeah. access whenever she was ready. She can get like used to it and it's in there. Right. So with that, we had to use the more shallow Yeah, and it's a little bit short. I guess it was a little bit shorter so it fit in there. Yeah. So we, so we, you know, put the substrate in there. It was still deep enough and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you a video, but it was yeah. still deep enough for her to dig. But a lot of times, like in the wild, a bearded dragon, the way that um, a female bearded dragon lays her eggs is she picks the perfect spot out in the wild. I'm, I'm assuming like somewhere with loose substrate that mm -hmm. she can dig down into and she'll dig um, a tunnel down underneath the ground um, and lay her eggs there on her way out. She'll kind of just fill the dirt back in. And when yeah. she comes up, she kind of tamps it down. Yeah. Um, so cute. Yeah, it is so yeah. cute. She didn't want anything to do with that. She didn't want anything that to do with that one that was in with. her enclosure. And I was very surprised by it because it was in there. She was used to it. Right. She just she never messed with it. She never. didn't want anything to do with it. I mean, there was a couple times I caught her because I was keeping a very close eye on her yeah. during this time, and I caught her um, like going in it, and then she would just come right back out. And if, even if we like tried to put her in there to kind of like acclimate her with the lay box, she would just come right back out. She was not having that oh, thing. Oh, no, no. No. So, so. we did the bigger tote, and it's the tall one, um, and we did it outside of her enclosure and put a, filled it up pretty good where yes. there was like, I don't know, 10 to probably 12 inches of, of dirt mm -hmm. and sand mix, yep. wet, and um, that that this one night where she was digging a lot, she was digging, 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 this was week three, like, three weeks and three days or something. And um, she started to dig and she we put her in there and like immediately she did mm -hmm. start to really dig in there. She started to make this tunnel and she was, I'll, was, I'll throw up a picture, it's so cute. She'd come up and she'd have dirt on her nose and she would like, she just looked like she loved it. She was yeah. in there and it just felt natural. Mm -hmm. I, we've never seen her do this. This has never happened before, right. but she just did it like so naturally. Yeah, it was oh. it was awesome. And so we were thinking, my goodness, she's going to lay tonight. Right. But then she, she stopped. It was, it was wide open. We were all kind of watching her because it was exciting, you know. Yeah. And I think maybe we, either it just wasn't the night or she just felt uncomfortable. Right. I don't know. Maybe it was just like she just wanted to test it, you know. Right. Um, and so it didn't, one, it didn't happen that night. Yeah, but one thing I wanted to point out about the substrate is that you had mentioned earlier you want it to be wet. Yeah. But um, I, I would compare it. If, you, if you're a gardener at all, it's similar to the way you want to plant seeds or um, plant something into the ground. You want mm -hmm. it wet enough to where you can squeeze it and it holds its shape, but you don't want it wet enough to where when you squeeze it, it, it yeah. drips water. Yeah. So you just want it kind of moist enough that she can dig a tunnel and it doesn't cave in on yes. her. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you were saying that night um, she didn't lay yeah. for whatever reason. It could have been... Yeah. You know, just that she was too exposed or just that it wasn't the right time. Right. And she was feeling this need to lay, but ended up being like, oh, yeah, oh, never mind. <laughs> so, you know, we put her back in her enclosure and that was that for that day. Right. Um, and then, you know, I, I figured a way. So the next time we did it, I think it was like the next day or the day after. Right. You know, she's digging in her enclosure. OK, put her we put her in there. She was digging like like she's doing right now. Mm -hmm. Um right there yeah she's uh, she's she's still laying duds but yeah. <laughs> anyways yeah so i made i came up with this idea to put this cardboard box we had a big cardboard box it was kind of like the same dimensions as the tote we had right and i um put that on top of of, of the tote mm -hmm. and dropped a light in there with a uvb and heat and um so it was like almost like a whole enclosed enclosure and mm -hmm. she got more of like um What's the word? She privacy. Was, privacy. Mm -hmm. And so we did that and she dug again. She was doing really well. And uh, and then I don't think it was wet enough and the and the cave collapsed on her. Right. And, you know, with nothing bad. Which, but like, again, that could have also just been she wasn't ready. She wasn't ready or something like that. But it did. And so she and then she stops digging. She just she wants out. You can tell she wants out. So She'll start nosing at the plastic mm -hmm. and things like that. But another reason why we put that light in there, if you remember, is because we noticed that with moist substrate, yeah. it can tend to be a bit cold and yeah. we were kind of concerned that maybe it was cooling your body down too much to be able to act right. to be active to yeah. lay the eggs if it's too cold they won't be so active right so we wanted to warm it up mm -hmm. with that lamp yeah. a little bit yeah so that didn't happen but then this was just under four four weeks and uh 
it was a snow day and I didn't have to work that day. We were all oh, home. Yes. It was a snow day. And of course, it was so exciting. It was so exciting. She's digging like she is right now. She's well, she's to trying out. to get out, but she was just digging. But she was digging real heavily in the, her enclosure. So Maybe. we did it again. Yeah. So the snow day that we will all remember as yeah. a family, it was honestly probably one of, you know, such a good memory to have with our family, all of us, even our oldest 17 year old was home for this. Yeah. Uh, and daddy stayed yeah. home that day too. Um, but the snow day, we were all here. And um, one thing that's really important is to keep giving your bearded dragon an option to lay those eggs yeah. because we haven't touched on being egg bound yeah. yet. So that's something that we were concerned about too. We were you know? very, con that's why we were- It was their first time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why we were so adamant on giving her the right environment, what felt, what seemed to feel right mm -hmm. to her to allow her to lay those eggs because they can surely, it, it can be uh, detrimental to a bearded dragon yeah. if, they, if they don't lay those eggs and they become egg bound. And what egg bound means, yeah. would, it, would you, I'm not sure I'll be as good ex at explaining it. Well, it's just sometimes um, a bearded dragon will hold on to those eggs if their environment isn't right, their husbandry um, isn't isn't correct, and they don't feel right, right. and so I, I'm sure there's other ways it can happen, you know, maybe for whatever reason they're just too clumped up and they can't push them out, but a lot of times it's just because they don't have the right settings to lay there and feel comfortable. And if they hold it too long, then they become egg bound and they clump up and they can't push them out. They get stuck to yes. the sides of their And, and then they, you, you will have to take them to a vet and they will need surgery on them yeah. um, to get it all out. You know, and, you, and no, nobody wants that. So yes, that was something that we were really concerned about. But, you know, we just gave her all the right things, you know, the calcium, the nutrition, the food, the exercise, baths you know, a, a suitable place to lay her eggs with the right substrate in it. And if you give them all those things, you give them everything that they need, the basics and all that, um, they will thrive in that and they will do what they need to do. It's a natural thing. They know what they need. You just have to give them those things and those options and they will take whatever is best for them, you know. So the snow day was the day it happened. Right. And, um you know, we put her in there and we, we kind of leave her alone and give her her privacy. And we would peek, peek in the door because it'd be in this room and we'd kind of close the door, but not all the way. Right. So we was kind of like creepers. We was creeping on her. Yeah. We was, you know, we'd go in there, check, and she's just digging away, digging away, building, making this tunnel. Um, and it happened pretty fast, yeah. honestly. And this was our first time. Mm -hmm. We were all we all had bets on how many she how many eggs she had in there because you just don't know, right. you know. And I think you know we were all way under. Yeah. What she, what she thought, ended up laying. Yeah. Right. We were like fifteen, you know, twelve, seventeen. You know, I think our highest one was like I don't know eighteen or nineteen. Yeah. Um. And so she's doing digging her thing, and then she does that tunnel, and then she turns around. Right. And now her, it's not her tail, it's her head poking out of the hole that she built. Sometimes you can barely see them mm -hmm. if you're giving them a lot of privacy. Yeah. You can kind of barely see uh, their head poking out yeah. of their tunnel. We had a clear tote too, which really helped us right. see. But still even then, <clears throat> she had all that dirt. It's like a little pile of dirt on their yeah. head because they're like, up. yeah, they're also <laughs> kind of digging with their nose and things. Yeah. And one way, and we learned this very quickly, I think, but one way you can tell that they in fact are laying mm -hmm. their eggs is when they turn around. And if they're not gonna lay, they'll turn around and just come out of the out of the tunnel. Yeah. Or at least our bearded dragon right. does. But if they turn around and they're sitting there, right. you know, you can kind of for sure know that they're gonna lay. And well, then the the most the yeah. biggest sign is the little squim. They'll they do sit a little there, shimmy. They'll be still, and then you'll just see a little a little bit of a shimmy and that's them uh, getting that egg out pushing the egg out yep. and so we saw that and we knew for sure she was laying right so we just let her do her thing we took little video we had some videos going on her mm -hmm. it was super cool and she did that and like all that happened with her starting to dig make her tunnel to laying all of her eggs it was like an hour it was the craziest thing she was so thing. fast was and again it. we said this was just a little over three weeks yeah so the yeah. usual time that a bearded dragon or so we've researched yeah, is four, to, four six to six weeks, weeks but she was just over three weeks so yeah. it, was, it was fast yeah it happened really fast and, and um she, yeah and they can have multiple clutches off of one mating right one time mating they can have up to six clutches mm -hmm. it's crazy and yep. you know she did have 
quite a few clutches. She did actually. Say, so that first uh, clutch she yeah, laid 27, she, 27 eggs. So she we laid, were all we were, and we were just counting them out like, oh my gosh. And you right. know, they all had this red circle with the dot and like you could see it. We put a flashlight under it and candle it because when you when you do grab the eggs and you put them up, you want them with the embryo facing up. Right. And um, that naturally happens when they lay it. So you just got to find that. Um, it's always, you know, at the top. Some yeah. people don't even, they'll just, however it is, they'll pick it up and they'll put it right in there just the way they grabbed it. But you can always make sure with a, with a flashlight. But, right. So we've yeah. got a lot of footage of us mm -hmm. um, digging up the eggs together. Again, we were all home and candling all the eggs. Mm -hmm. And so we'll show you that. Yeah. That's a fun process. I love right. that. Yeah, it's really cool. Yep. It's cool to see what she left and how many she had. And so since it's been so long, since we were supposed to actually record part two, yeah. it, we've had a lot going on, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and part of what's been going on is that we've allowed enough time to pass that we, Ozzy is actually going on her sixth clutch that she's laying. Yeah, but they're duds. But they are all yeah. duds. So she laid 27, 29, 29 31, 31, I think. Yeah, 31. And then 33. Yeah. With a few being duds. Yeah. So with, like yeah. that fourth clutch, she had a few duds at the end. And she, ever since then, she's just been laying like duds here and there. It's just been, it's been weird. She just keeps trying to produce, but she, she doesn't is, have any. No, she does no, keep producing. She doesn't have any more you know, fertilization, fertilization. In, in there. So, and so we've, we've watched enough of these clutches for her to lay, to, to be able to tell right off the bat when she lays them or when we mm -hmm. dig them up. Yeah. Um, we could tell in that fourth clutch, which ones were duds and yeah. which ones weren't. It's they'll pretty be like apparent. smaller yellow. They'll, they'll be, you know, a little more squishy. Yeah. yeah. yeah or they'll be hard. They'll be harder. They'll oh be yeah. A little more squishy, yep. but you, mm -hmm. You can tell right away a, a, a fertilized one is going to be nice and white and look good. And then you'll see a little pink yep. in there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's crazy. She just keeps trying to lay more. I don't she's, know. She's, I, you can see me looking around right now yeah. because we, she was behind us and you saw you her saw digging. Yeah. But And glass surfing, so we just let her out. Right. We just had to let her out. Now I'm like watching her just probably run gonna around. Probably going to put her in her dig box. Yeah, yeah probably going to have to put her in her lay box. Get some of those out. I wish she would stop laying eggs i just i get worried you know yeah. about her you know using too much calcium mm -hmm. from her own body and, and this has been a lot of work it it's is. been a lot you know like it it's is. not easy and thank gosh we have both of us helping each other with it because it is a it's an, it's not a full-time job but it's a lot of work i mean right. it's all day you know here and there doing things for them and especially these babies my yeah. goodness but they're well, so cute we haven't gotten to that part yeah, yet they are cute <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's it for part two i wish we had ozzy here with us but she's out getting her exercise to lay her yeah. clutch of duds i can we can't stop her i don't know how to stop her I don't know. but thanks everyone for watching part two stay tuned for part three and we'll see you next time thank you thanks Bye. for watching Bye.